So here we are, guys. We have six games remaining in the league. We are still four points off of sixth place. We have two vital games today to see if we can keep ourselves in this playoff race. Let's get into it. So guys, welcome back to the Stones Rolling On Up and now to episode 54 of our series. If you missed last episode guys, where we had two really difficult games, one against Barnsley, one against Fleetwood, then I'd highly recommend going and watching it. There should be a link right above me for you to click on so you can see how we got on against those teams. And since last time out guys, we've only played one game of course. When we did play those sides, we had one win and one defeat. And after we lost to Barnsley in the league, it looked like our playoff chances could have been dashed. It seems, however, after our change in formation, that our hopes may still be intact because we are still within four points of now sixth placed Wigan. Wigan, who we face today as well. After last episode, we played off against Sunderland. Sunderland, who were in third place in the league, a really really difficult opponent. I used the same 5-3-2 formation with that flat free midfield, a little bit more possession based, and it worked really well. We won it 2-0. Goals from Cole Palmer and Chandrinos. His first goal for ages since he signed in the January window. So a really good performance. Really happy with this. And it was just a really good team performance, it has to be said. And the thing is, guys, in the league, as I've just said, we are still within four points. We are sitting on 64 points. Wigan on 68. We have Wigan up first, and then I believe we have Shrewsbury away, who are a mid-table side. So if we can beat Wigan and we can beat Shrewsbury, we could possibly find ourselves at the end of this episode in the playoff positions. It's going to be tight. The end of this season running is going to really come down to the wire, I think. I mean, as long as we don't lose to Wigan, it's still going to be all up for grabs. But it obviously depends on how we get on in this first game today. I'm very, very nervous because I know that the light is, this is going to be our last season with Maidstone. So if we lose these games today, this could be one of the last episodes we have with this side. Now, in terms of how we're lining up for the Wigan game, I say it's the same formation you saw at the end of last episode. It's the 5-3-2. It's Lewis Ward in net with Viner, Clark and Thorpe. I believe the same back three that played in the Fleetwood game. It's then Swanson and McCallum, then Rivier, Cole Palmer and Canas in midfield who have done really well since this change to the midfield three. And then Tafani and this time around Peter McBride. I wanted to give Chandrinos the game, but he's on international duty. For whatever reason, he's on international duty with the Welsh under 21 squad and we don't have our game postponed. Really, really annoying because he scored in the last game. I wanted to play him for this one. But I can't. So thank you very much for that, Football Manager, and the scheduling gods for completely screwing me over. Hopefully it doesn't cost us, because I'm counting on Peter McBride and Ugbo to still be able to do a good job for us up front. It's still a very strong squad. So let's get into this first game and see how we do. So then let's submit our side and see how we get on with Wigan here. We really need to make sure, as I've already said, we do not lose this game. A draw is okay. A win is perfect. And I am so, so nervous for how we're going to get on. I'm going to go in the dressing room. I'm going to be blunt and I'm going to say I fully expect us to keep our run going. Okay, that didn't go too well. It's a bit confused. Let's see if I can recover it. Because I have faith in them. I seem to hopefully got most of them around. Everyone but McBride was okay with that. So I kind of recovered that, thankfully. Of course, we are away and we are in the Amber and Black still. I think it's still called the DW Stadium, isn't it, for Wigan? I can't actually remember what their stadium is called anymore because of the fact that its responses always change. But it's going to be a really tough game. I'm hoping with the formation up against their 4 4 2, we can just break them down, keep the ball, and just do the job over them. It's going to be tough. I hate playing 4 4 2, as we've seen so many times in this series, but I am hopeful nonetheless. McCallum's in a lot of space here. McCallum, oh, he's just over. He had such a good chance then. He was in so much space, but couldn't get it on target, sadly. Now, though, there's a highlight starting with Wigan on the ball. Is it actually going to be a chance for Wigan? Okay, that's terrible. Um, I'll just mention, guys, as well, by the way, that a video that came out this week on the channel was a brand new experiment for FM20. My final one that will be for this version of the game. I'm just going to say to lads to demand more. 
and that was an experiment which looks a 15 year transfer embargo that's been imposed over all of the top five European leagues, so the Bundesliga, La Liga, the Premier League, Syria, and Ligue 1. So all the teams in those divisions have had a transfer embargo imposed on them. There should be a link right above me for you to click on. There also be a link for you at the end of the video if you want to take a look at it then. So if you want to have a look at it, it shows a lot of craziness going on with things like smaller promoted sides and so on doing well. So if you want to have a look, there's links to it. You can also get the database files and so on from the video's description. But as I say, it's certainly an interesting watch with some craziness that Football Manager throws out. There's a chance here for Wigan. It's gone over. It's been quite a quiet half, really. We've only seen, what is it, the three highlights, no real kind of clear-cut opportunities. And it looks like we're going in at half-time at nil-nil. We're not doing a huge amount in terms of possession. We've had the only shot on target of both sides at half time. So I'm not going to change anything just yet. And I'm also going to say to the lads, actually, I know a lot of you'd be keen to avenge what happened last time. So I guess you must have lost against Wigan when we last played them. I'm going to say to the attackers, I'm disappointed because we've seen nothing from them. Oh, there's a highlight straight away once we begin in this half. Is it going to be for us? I'm hoping so because that would be a nice way to kick off the second half. Lovely ball there from Cole Palmer. Peter McBride has finally scored. He's been at the club now for like three months. He's been awful, utterly, utterly awful. And a wonderful through ball there from Cole Palmer in that now advanced playmaker attack role in the central midfield. A lovely ball, wonderful, just completely killed the defence. And then McBride has a really easy finish. Fantastic start to the second half. That could be a massive goal. I don't want to see the offside. I don't even want to know if it was possibly offside. Fantastic goal. It really, really was. That could be massive, honestly, guys. Uh, if we can make the playoffs, that would be so, so good. I mean, I know we've had consecutive promotions in two previous years, so I never expect to even be competing for the playoffs this season. As I'm saying that, they've got the ball through here, Wigan. Lewis Ward with a wonderful save. Get in there. Come on. But as I was saying, I didn't expect to be up and around the playoffs this season. I really didn't. I didn't think our squad was good enough. And the fact we had to sell Gillespie as well made it even less likely. But we still keep ourselves in that hunt just about. And it's just wonderful to see from the lads here. I mean, there's a highlight here. There's thought 30 minutes left of the game. And that's, that's a wonderful ball in. I mean, we got quite lucky that that got blocked. I don't know if there's going to be another chance. There's way too much space out on that left. Can we please get the ball off a brilliant tackle, Cole Palmer? And, oh, he's not getting the... Oh, no. Oh, dear me. When, the, when that ball fell to that player to cross in, I just felt my heart just sink. I was like, oh, no. Right, I'm going to take off McCallum because he's playing pretty poorly. I'm actually going to take off Tafani. Um, who do I take him off for, though? Who's the better one to put in that position? Apparently McBride can play it, so I'm going to put McBride there, and I'm going to bring on Ugbo to play on the advance forward row instead. Make that double change and see if it does us any favours or not. I'm tempted to make us go a little bit more defensive as well, to be totally honest with you. I'm going to say to let's just demand more, and in fact we are into the 80th minute, so I'm going to make a bit of a defensive change Max Power is nearly fit, but I don't really want to bring him on. I'm thinking I'm going to drop Canas back. I'm going to go something like this. I'm going to make McBride a bit more of a supportive player. And I'm going to put Ugbo as a pressing forward instead. And I think that might be the only thing we do. Yeah, I think that's all we're going to do for the moment. Hang on, I want to go cautious as well. Right, okay, we're into the last five minutes. Let's go defensive. I'm going to go defensive like this. We're going to go time-wasting. We're going to stop the overlaps, going to go more disciplined, going to bring on the right back in Joel Cena. We're going to put both our wing backs on defend. It's going to be very risky, this, but I'm hoping it can just help. We can waste some time with the sub, things like that. Right, come on, lads. Very, very defensive. Um, let's drop the line. Let's regroup all of this stuff. Come on. We've got three minutes of added time to get through. Come on. This is massive. We can hold out. We've done it. We have done it. Fantastic result. 1-0 away. A really, really tough Wigan side. Oh, come on. So in the league, we should be, what, a point now behind Wigan? It obviously depends on other results if we're a point off of sixth place because I think there was a team above us. Um, I think it may be an MK Dons. I can't remember. I'm going to say to lads, people written us off. Really good performance. I'm so chuffed with that win. What has that done for us in the league? So we're up into eighth. We were a point behind Wigan have dropped to seventh, and now it's Coventry ahead of us. They're three points ahead. So it is very much within our grasp. A three-point gap, we have a far better goal difference over Coventry, and we're only a point behind Wigan with five games remaining. Oh, my goodness. 
I mean, I've just felt like I've had a bit of a weight lifted off me, to be honest, now that we've managed to get the result over Wigan. But we've still got to play Shrewsbury in this episode, who are in 15. I think they've just lost, actually. In fact, no, they haven't played for Shrewsbury. But we've got to play them next. We're going away to them. So I'll see you in that game in a few seconds. So, guys, we're now here ready for our second game of the episode, this time away at Shrewsbury. And it's pretty much the same squad that has just played, but I've made one or two small tweaks. It's still Lewis Ward in net with Viner, Clark, Thorpe, and then Swanson at the back. But it's now Fraser Greengrass at left back. Sam McCallum's got a slight knock. He's not 100% fit. He's basically returning to full fitness tomorrow in game. So I decided just to rest him and give Greengrass the match here. I've then dropped Timothy Rivier for Maddie Smith, only because he had a relatively poor game. He had about a 6.8 average rating, and I thought I'd give Maddie Smith the game. It's then Cole Palmer and Canas in midfield alongside Maddie Smith, and then Peter McBride, and then the returning McCordy Chandrinos, who is now back from his international duty. I've swapped Peter McBride to now being deep line forward role and given Chandrinos the advance forward. So we'll see how we get on here away at Shrewsbury. Hopefully, we can get another win to our name. So then let's submit our side and see how we do away this time at Shrewsbury. Of course, they're not as strong a side as Wigan. They are down as a mid-table team and they have actually just got spanked by Middlesbrough during the international break between the Wigan game and this game. So hopefully their morale might be down a little bit. It's worth noting as well, guys, that Wigan are facing off against Middlesbrough as well while we're playing Shrewsbury here. So hopefully Borough can do us a favour and get the job done against Wigan. So we can, if we get any points here, can try and leapfrog them in the table. So, of course, we're down there in eighth position. We're three points behind Coventry, one behind Wigan, a win here, and it really gives us a chance of getting up into sixth position. There's an early highlight here in the fifth minute of the game. Good ball out there to Zach Swanson. What can he do here down the right-hand side? Swanson inside to McBride. A lovely ball. Is he on? Oh, McCauley Chandrinos is offside. That was a really nicely worked goal. Sadly, Chandrinos was offside. He did look it. I mean, how close was he? I mean, he is just about. That was close. It was unlucky there. Good little goal. Nice little early signs from us, although it didn't count. Still was a good early sign from the lads. I'm going to say to note to demand more because I want us to keep pushing. Don't want us to ease off the throttle. We need to put the pressure on Shrewsbury early on. Oh no, there's a dangerous free kick here. Oh dear. This could be really bad. I think it's Sean Goss for Shrewsbury. Wow, that was initially going in and it just curled away. Barnsley at the moment, it's worth noting, guys are losing. And if Barnsley keep dropping points as well, we keep gaining them. We could still catch up to Barnsley in the table as well. So there's a lot of things going on in the league at the moment. There really is. We've only this game and then the following four matches left. It's all to play for. Maddie Smith with a corner here. It's going in. Unfortunately, Craig Hawk couldn't win it. McBride has it here, though. It's a good ball in. Maddie Smith at the far post. Come on. Oh, Chandrinos. I mean, it's offside again. That's unlucky. Oh, OK. Well, we're still drawing. We're not losing. Wigan have just conceded literally just before half time. They conceded to Middlesbrough. Coventry are losing as well at the moment. So even if we draw, we are going to gain points on both Wigan and Coventry. So currently, 0-0 isn't the end of the world. I'd rather a win, but it isn't the worst thing that could happen. I'm going to go into the dressing room. I'm actually going to say to lads, I'm far from pleased with what I've seen. I want us to go out and win it. If we can, I'll say to the rest of the lads that they have the ability to make a difference. And they all look pretty happy with that. Shrewsbury have changed their tactic up. Do we change ours up to try and counter that? Oh, no. Shrewsbury have just scored from a corner. Oh, goodness sake. Basically, Shrewsbury have just gone with our old formation, the 5-2-1-2. And I'm wondering if we put wingers on and try and exploit the space out on the wings. Because that could help us. In fact, I am going to do that. I'm not going to take any time. Let's go and do that. I don't know who we can put out on the wings, mind you. Right, let's put Clark over here. I'm actually going to go 4-2-3-1, I think, actually. We'll pull the wing backs back. I'm going to take off Chandrinos. We'll put McBride up front. I'm going to bring on Ugbo, and I'm going to bring on Tafani. So we'll go something like this. We'll see how this does for us and see if it can work or not. I mean, it's a risky tactic, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's going to do the job, but I'm hoping if we can focus our efforts down the flanks and kind of exploit the spaces down there, we may be able to do some damage to the Shrewsbury team. I'm really not sure, though. 
And I mean, currently that time is just ticking away and we are just giving up an opportunity to try and catch up with these other sides. I wonder if we go a little bit more direct because it's just not working at the moment, is it? Unfortunately. Right, let's make another change. I'm going to say for us to go slightly higher tempo, go more direct. We're going to stop working the ball into the box. We're going to start passing into space a bit more. And who do we take off? I'm going to take off Maddie Smith for Timothy Rivier, and I'm going to push Palmer up. Now, it's very risky this. I'm also going to make McBride an advance forward as well. And we'll see if this can help. We just need to start going for this now because we're running out of time. We need at least a goal. We need to make sure we don't lose this and keep up with the other clubs in and around the playoff spaces. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I thought last game was going to be the difficult one. Hang on, there's a highlight. Cole Palmer's free kick. Craig Thorpe at the far post. That's always going over game. Why are you even showing me that? Right, Demar Moore. I'm tempted to go. In fact, we're going to go attacking. We're not going to wait around. There is a highlight. Come on, Canas to Greengrass. Come on, get it in the box. Fraser Greengrass. We're running out of time. We need a goal now, really. Riviere. If we want to try and win this game, we need a goal to be scored now. Greengrass. Canas. Come on, Ugbo. Square it. Oh, come on. Get it in the box. I don't think that was a highlight. I'm hoping that's not anyway. Come on. Please tell me that wasn't the highlight what we just saw just then. Do not be a Shrewsbury chance. Do not be a Shrewsbury chance here, game. Come off it, please. Oh, we're going to lose. We're going to lose, aren't we? Wow. How did he not just score that? That guy, I don't know who it was. He had no excuse and he should not have just screwed that up. Oh, uh, what do we do? I don't even know what we do. Oh, for God's sake. Right, wing backs on attack. We, we've just got nothing to lose now. Oh, for God's sake. Right, counter... We're running out of time. I don't think we're going to do this, lads. I really don't. There's another dangerous free kick for Shrewsbury here. They've gone for it. It's just about wide. Oh, we need something so desperately. We need at least a goal because points-wise, it's what? 67. It's still three points. I mean, if we lose, it still is doable. But this was such a good opportunity and we're just throwing it away. Can we at least get a point? No, we can't. Oh, no. I'm going to say that wasn't good enough because it wasn't. That was crap. Oh, how's that done in the league? Is it three points still? It is. So Coventry lost. Oh, Wigan lost. And MK Dons, how do they get on? MK Dons won. So, I mean... We, that was such an opportunity. We won. If we won that game, we would have been up into sixth place. Barnsley drew as well. Oh, that was such a vital opportunity, and we've blown it. I mean, even if we used got a draw, we would have still only been two points off, but it's still three is the gap. It's not the end of the world. We can still do this. We still have four games left. Let's go to our schedule. We'll see what we're going to come back for next episode. So, of course, with it only being four games left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Blackpool game off screen and then we will come back for a triple header with Wickham, Mansfield and Accrington. It's also worth noting that Wickham are in second place. So it's going to be a really tough game, that first game there with Wickham. But next episode, guys, which could possibly be the last one of the Stones Rolling Up series, will be Wickham, Mansfield and Accrington. So then, guys, that just about wraps up this episode today. One really, really great performance there against Wigan. And then that second one with Shrewsbury is so annoying. How just, just a waste of a match it really was because then we had such a good opportunity to catch up with that playoff pack and we ruined it. That is the story of this season, just kind of not taking our chances when we're presented with them. But we are still firmly in that playoff race. And of course, next episode, as I've already mentioned, will be a vital triple header and one that will determine if we get into the playoffs or not. And as I've already mentioned, it could well be our last episode of the series. Hopefully, though, guys, you have enjoyed this episode today. If you have, then please do chuck a like on it. It really does help the channel out. And also, guys, let me know down in the comment section do you think we can reach those playoffs? I'm really hopeful that we can. The fact it's three points, the fact we have better goal difference than most of the teams in that hunt, it does give us a chance, but it's going to be close. 
As well, guys, if you're looking forward to seeing any more of the Stone Drone Up series, or if you're looking forward to seeing any of my upcoming FM21 content, such as the Manchester United B to save once FM21 gets released, then do make sure to subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with everything that I do here on YouTube. As well, guys, as I mentioned earlier on about the FM20 transfer embargo experiment, there should be a link to it right here on the screen for you to click on. So if you want to take a look at that, then please do feel free to have a look at that experiment video. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next time.